for inviting me to speak with you and the whole team here. Uh, my name is George McKinney. I'm a software developer and I love VR, AR, XR, all this uh, that we're working in. And I just want to share with you some of the experiences that I've had over the years uh, playing with this technology. And uh, I'll do a brief intro um, and then, but this is the agenda we'll follow. Um, introduction about myself, and I want to hear a little bit about yourselves in terms of like what you're interested in. Uh, you can put it in the chat or you can just uh, say it. Uh, be very interactive. Feel free to interrupt me. Um, it's no problem. I've had plenty of time, uh, you know, programming at home alone for a long, long, long time. So I'm happy to talk with someone. <laughs> it's been great. <laughs> so um, I'll well, do a technology review, um, kind of like a high level, some videos. Um, I have friends in the VR industry. I wanted to point out some of the, their work as well. And, uh, and the basic idea that I wanted to do is um, to get across that uh, you don't have to be an expert uh, to make something fun and interesting. And I want to uh, give you a, a pathway at the end of this so that you can start uh, sharing content uh, in a way that uh, you're comfortable with. Okay. So uh, a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in the 80s uh, in San Jose. Uh, or 70s and 80s, uh, playing Atari, and I first started programming uh, in, I guess, junior high school, high school, with the Commodore 64, and um, just learning, like, basic and assembly and stuff like that, and it was a lot of fun. Um, used to play uh, at Activision. They used to have contests. Basically, we were, like, uh, quality control, kind of like testers, game testers. Uh, I was only, like, uh, 10 years old back then, uh, and so, you know, Video games and this kind of like uh, experience and simulation is something that I, I, I grew up with and really uh, enjoyed a lot. Um, I went to uh, Stanford, actually, originally planning going to engineering, uh, got diverted from that, went to history, got an MBA at USC here in LA, and then went back into tech. And ever since, it's been like 17 years or a little more than that in the industry and last 15 of them just programming and just kind of like starting from the bottom up and working on a bunch of uh, products. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, most of the AR uh, work has been around uh, advertising, which is why you can see some like Disney, Kraft, Acura, Honda, like those kinds of things. Um, and in the last couple years, a lot of cloud computing, um, specifically around Amazon, and then, um, but I've done a lot of different kinds of other things. And so, um, it's particularly around the mobile app development, it's like uh, Android, iPhone, um, uh, native Android, uh, hybrid um, uh, on iPhone. But, uh, but anything fair game, just do a pretty open discussion uh, about uh, anything you're interested in. Um, oh. The company I have is uh, Zucchini Mobile, and uh, my partner, uh, Josue Bustos, and I, we've been working together for like, I don't know, like 10 years um, doing stuff. And uh, he used to work at Samsung um, doing developer relations uh, for them. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So a uh, quick uh, show of hands or about yourselves. Um, we may put it in the chat. Uh, what kind of tech level should I be uh, aiming at? Um, I was planning on doing uh, a little bit of uh, like WordPress uh, in terms of setting it up for it to be a VR uh, content distribution system. And then also uh, into uh, 3JS, uh, which is a framework for creating uh, 3D content. And um, I could go into A-frame as well, um, but depending upon the time and interest, um, I guess you can think about it and let me know later. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but that would help. <laughs> uh, can I ask you what's the difference between 3JS, Babylon JS, and uh, A-frame? Those stuff is kind of like... A mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, um, so um, I'm not actually uh, familiar with Babylon JS. I haven't worked with that one, but if I took a look at it, um, I could probably quickly tell. So mm -hmm. I'll get into that. But uh, 3JS is probably one of the more important kind of topics right now um, because we got a slide on 3JS actually. Oops, sorry. Uh, I just kind of scrolled through a bunch of slides, but I'll just say like 3GS is a pure JavaScript framework. It's like 99% JavaScript for mm -hmm. creating 3D experiences. It leans heavily on a WebGL, and WebGL is a web-based standard for uh, 3D uh, uh, creation, consumption, uh, and it's like spurred from the Kronos group. The Kronos group being the big consortium of all the big uh, manufacturers and software vendors that create interoperability so these experiences will, will uh, work. So uh, 3JS is uh, an important library um, and A-Frame comes from Mozilla, you know, and that is a kind of an HTML based way, like a tag based language that will allow you to create um, content, kind of like the same way that we're used to uh, creating HTML websites, you can do that with A-Frame. And so A-Frame is a way of um, uh, kind of describing it and without actually having to know how to program as much. And it's actually built uh, and compatible with 3JS, so you can blend 3GS and A-Frame content together to, to further extend the functionality. Hmm. Uh, cool, yeah, do you wanna go ahead with your presentation? And I think he wrote something like two thumbs up for George, <laughs> 64 and USC MBA. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, right on. But you know, I, I also like, you know, UCLA as well and all colleges and, I, I don't think it really matters where you go to school. It's just, you know, most important thing is that, you know, we're learning, you know, and then being here and curious, like, you know, sharing with each other, that's the most valuable thing that we can do. So uh, I wanted to come back to this uh, idea of like the holodeck. Like, I think you've all kind of heard the idea, like the holodeck from Star Trek, but Here's a trivia question. Like, what year was it first uh, introduced? I mean, there've been so it's like Star Trek's from like the 1960s until the present day. So, like, can you take a guess as to when the first holodeck appeared, or like the first VR kind of experience, kind of like immersive, kind of like what we're doing today? Or what decade? How old is this tech or this kind of concept? Mm, yeah, sure. sure. Go okay. ahead. Yeah. All right. So, uh, curious enough, I mean, I remember seeing the I mean, because Star Trek is one of my favorite shows. Um, I remember seeing it in, the, um, I guess, eight, 1988. It's like this is the rendering of the Star Trek holodeck from 1988, but uh, evidently there was a cartoon from like 1974 where they had like a VR playroom um, that they got trapped in. And I guess the whole uh, concept of these holodecks on Star Trek is usually there's some kind of mischief that happens <laughs> inside these environments. Um, but, but fast forward into um, today, and, oops, actually, I think, I, um, I know Dami warned me, don't use a lot of text. So I swear, <laughs> this is gonna be the only slide with text. But no yes, worries. you no guys worries. are familiar with um, augmented reality. First thing is like, usually there's a, there's a camera and you look through the, the phone or computer screen in order to get what you're doing. And then virtual reality, uh, a lot of times we're using a headset, but you know, the first virtual reality was just like another computer screen. Uh, you can use a camera, uh, although a lot of times, you know, with the more, with due to the advances in technology, 
is more common to see with a camera. Uh, mixed reality is more of a newer concept, and basically where real world elements are used. And I think um, uh, when I tried out the HoloLens, uh, it was really cool to see, um, say, water fall, like digital water, virtual water fall, hit the table, roll off the table, and then start falling again. So like that's the uh, kind of a mixture of reality <laughs> um, that's kind of like extends augmented reality. And spatial audio, I threw that in there also because um, it, whenever you have a stereo in the, and we can play with like, you know, the left and the right, then that changes our perception. And, and oftentimes when we're creating VR, any kind of these MR experiences that having an audio, just like having a film score, like is really important for the out overall impact that you're going to get. So um, I, if, if you have time uh, to learn uh, spatial audio and use those tools, and that'd be great. So um, this is. Hey, hmm? hey, this is Justin. I, uh, I I I was just waiting for an opportunity to intro. I think you had asked to do an intro, so. I, oh sure, I yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just to know your audience. I think uh, I'm, I'm pretty new to this this community, so I I'm just here to learn. Mm -hmm. what kind of cool things that you've done and i'm pretty interested in getting involved in the training side workforce training because i used to be an auto for a while and i i feel really strongly that there's a lot of efficiency gains with this technology so uh i have more of an analytics background um i'm not really sure how to get involved without spending a significant amount of time in unity or in unreal engine development so just looking for advice on that right now it's unreal engine yeah just uh because i don't I'm not really sure it would be worth my time to spend training in, uh, myself mm -hmm. as a developer at this point, but what yeah. kind of avenues there are to get involved in the community, even in the company that won't involve heavy mm -hmm. retraining, I guess, with my own skill sets would be really valuable to hear. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's uh, exciting. And it's like, because I mean, I have friends that are like working in the in this industry now. Like they came out either like from community college or from uh, liberal arts degrees, and were were high school teachers. And and so if you're if you really want to do this, then you can do it. It's just in a matter of years. It's just you know persistence and then uh, exposure, then practice. It's, and there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, yeah, awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah, so whatever you have um, to share, I, I'm all in. Uh, definitely on the level of complexity, when you went into the, the JS stuff, I got lost, but uh, yeah. maybe the rest of your slides will have more introductory material still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do something like that. I mean, there's a. Uh, yeah, I, I attended the iLearn conference this week too. So. iLearn? Okay, I'm not familiar with that one. That was the global conference and uh, more like VR and education. Mm -hmm. Was that in San Francisco or? San Francisco, I think there are many people from San Francisco, but it was on Rebella. Okay, I'll have to look into that one. Sure, yeah, it was a, from Sunday to Thursday. Yeah, at a break. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think that was just the past week, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking at 11 too, so I'm sorry if I dug out by this. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, back when I was uh, I really took programming seriously, I went back to community college and I took a few classes. Then I went to the Sun Microsystems Conference. And then I came across this uh, experience. And this is, I guess, a demo from one of the engineers. Can you hear this or no? Yes, yes, we can hear it. Can yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a virtual reality experience that was created. This is real loud. But this was created using Java, the Java programming language. And so the the idea of a holodeck and engineers, we've been playing with this uh, idea for a long time, right? 
in my video. Okay. And you can see that here he's got one, two, three, four, five video screens uh, playing during this uh, demonstration and is a virtual character uh, in the space. Uh, and this is what back in 2010. And um, and things are pretty much kind of the same way. And I guess the, the main point of this uh, slide is, is to show the evolution of the technology. Back then, um, you need to have a powerful computer to, uh, to render this. I mean, this is just like 10 years ago. Um, so things have advanced, uh, I guess, kind of along the lines of Moore's Law. It was like we get more computing power and smaller and smaller. And so today we have a lot more uh, toys to play with that we can integrate. And importantly, it's like we can incorporate sensor and uh, sensors like uh, probably I've seen like the leap motion um, so that you can tell distance and things that are around you, even though you're, you're covered with a uh, headset in your way. So, uh, but 10 years ago, like this was kind of state of the art. Uh, here's um, something that uh, mine, Brad, Brad Nelson, uh, he just uh, published this game this month on the PlayStation. He's been doing uh, VR content for studios and he worked on uh, the movie, you know, the, I guess the World War I movie set in England, um, Dunkirk. Uh, for their VR experience. And, but this is his first title that he did all by himself. And the concept of it is um, <laughs> like you imagine the world from the perspective of a dog. Yeah. And so the dog gets rewarded for doing good things and then gets, uh, but also does bad things. And so that's what kind of makes it funny. Um, and Sony PlayStation is actually the most uh, successful of the VR platforms. And the thing about it is um, this industry is like, has been trying to evolve for a long time, but oh, the dogs being bad. <laughs> but the industry has been trying to evolve for a very long time and so we just keep experimenting uh, things but making money is really important because otherwise it stops I have a slide here to show like a bunch of you know XR related companies that, it, that are go have already gone out of business or will go out of business very soon um, so uh, PlayStation is something that uh, it's fortunate that you know that it's been working pretty well. Um, uh, is a cinematic virtual reality. I don't know if I can really play this one, um, but this is in the slides because um, playing this actually really doesn't do it justice. Um, Veronica, um, she's I remember meeting her at a hackathon. And she uh, was just starting out. Um, she is just still learning, like Unity, uh, Unity 3D. Um, and she designed like the bridge of like the Battlestar Galactica. It had never seen the TV show. <laughs> it was pretty amazing what she did by herself over like two and a half days. And fast forward like four or five years, and she's definitely uh, someone to watch now. She's um, she makes a lot of, uh, I guess, theatrical uh, kind of content. Uh, and then this is something that she did on her own. And uh, should I try to play it? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Go to her website. Most of the clips I have are from YouTube, but hers is uh, Vimeo. <laughs> I'm based here in LA. Oh, where's the? Let's 
getting up. Close some windows here. So what's this about? It's like a space or? So the approach that they took on this was really uh, intriguing because it's like a movie. So what do you do when you go to a movie? It's like you, um, you sit back and you watch. So they had seamlessly choreographed and they did motion capture. You can just see from these um, pictures here. Um, the people, and then because it, it, it's, it's a cartoonish kind of movie. I, don't, I think it's like 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. Um, but so they choreographed fight scenes and everything was like completely laid out, just kind of like it was a movie, right? And then because like all the detail, you can just tell from this uh, scene right here or, um, and then they were doing like motion like jumping from one scene to the other but while you're wearing the headset all you do is you just like you can just sit and then look around this way or that way and the story moves and then it's kind of like it engulfs you and you can see things that are happening so if you watch it several times you'll see different things that you didn't notice because you're looking over here instead of over there and um so so she got a lot of, uh, I guess this team got a lot of acclaim uh, for doing that. And I think this is about two years uh, old, uh, this project. Uh, and, but I think it's like the, I would say the standard for how a um, movie could be made in virtual reality. So let me get this loaded. <laughs> So what's the story? Yeah. You know? Say that again. What's the story about? about? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but basically it's like a, they're being chased, you know? <laughs> they're being chased to this virtual world. And um, uh, yeah, can you share the website or any link for the? Podcast? Oh yeah, cool. yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll maybe share maybe share on the chat if you have. Okay. Yeah. And where is chat? Uh, let me open up. Yeah, so so maybe this is a really good uh, like examples for people who has non-tech background to kind of direct something that is super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think this is like kind of like best class we are. <laughs> but oh, oh, I just found the chat over here. Cool. Okay, make it bigger. Here's the miracle. The miracle there. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, no, that's good. So, okay. So next thing is, and here's modern day. I, I won't play the audio so much, but just a little bit. Um, Facebook's been at this for a while. They announced at their conference um, a couple of years ago, F8, that they were working on this. They had Mark Zuckerberg um, in VR uh, in the conference room. Um, and so now there's this, what they call uh, Facebook Horizon. Right. 
All right, so it's very much an ad. <laughs> so basically, Facebook is trying to uh, create Oasis from Ready Player One, like create a virtual uh, world, like Second Life, right? Right, exactly. And it's, this is, I don't know, probably like the fifth time the industry has tried to do something like this. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, because be before I remember, I joined Charlie Fink's one event. He said that uh, because Charlie Fink actually is the industry leader and the pioneer, his mm -hmm. background was like the um, art director, junior art director for a lot of famous um, uh, animations. Um, mm -hmm. Disney uh, like Lion King or something like he was like I, I would say like he's probably the yeah. super top tier of uh, XR industry and then mm -hmm. he said that before yeah. I know got a lot of budget from Disney and trying to create something and everyone say oh this is the um, the next the, thing the big the, thing yeah yeah the big thing and today is the uh, like a zero year of VR or something like the, like the yeah. the birthday for VR but after 20 30 40 years people still saying like oh um uh, this is today uh, this uh, this uh, this year is the the birth the, the birth year of v VR. So it seems right. like they are trying to this technology is just keeping well, like delay and it's always not there. Yeah. I wish this time is it could be there, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be, this could be the time, right? I mean, maybe COVID is having this impact on us. And yeah, gonna... I think I heard like uh, last, uh, last event from mm -hmm. Julie Smithen and Alan Smithen, they are, they are really big in uh, XR industry and yeah. they they said that yeah actually COVID is kind of helping um, XR industry because people mm -hmm. are not satisfied with just video or 2D uh, interaction <laughs> they kind of yeah. want to have like a, a virtual interaction without actual uh, physical right. contact but still enjoy kind of the feeling of it but it's just you see like 5G is not even there, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you see like you, you are trying to um, live stream your video and everything is a little lagging. Mm -hmm. So you see, yeah. yeah, I think technology, yeah. yeah. Actually that reminds me, I should have plugged my ethernet cable directly into the computer to, to make sure the internet was good. But but yeah, yeah like, but, but that's the reality. It's like, you know, 10 years ago, what were the computers? I mean, they were, I mean, our phone now is as powerful as the, the computers were back then, right? And, um, and then you know, the networks are faster now. And uh, so, you know, there is a promise here, but then, uh, and I think one of the takeaways I wanted to come away from this is that there's a lot of technology, a lot of buy this, you know, the, you know they, want, they want us to spend money, right? Mm. But uh, after so many failed, I mean, I'm an early adopter on a lot of this stuff and I'm just, I've got boxes, old stuff that doesn't work anymore. It's like, it's forgotten. And I hope that we can just standardize them. That's why I pointed out the the Sony PlayStation is like, oh, it was something as a gaming console that was already, you know, mm. good job. And yeah, then just added so, the yeah. VR to it. And so yeah. like that community, it works really well. Yes. Yeah, I think for me, AR can work better than VR for now. It's because you see <laughs> web AR, webs, web already established, right? Everyone yeah. has website and we all know how to use website. So if you build on the yeah. new stuff like WebGL or Web AR, Web VR <laughs> on top of website, then people can accept it really fast. And right. then, like for mobile AR, right, the filter thing, because everyone we we kind of use social media and we use uh, mobile mm -hmm. phone every day. So it yeah. seems like this is part of our life. It's just enhanced. We don't have to relearn or you see like the gargle. It's just mm -hmm. not natural. And the content is not there. It's not enough yeah. for me to kind of every day right. wear it. It's just like for one game, I buy like a, a thousand bucks for the whole year thing. 
right. and then just play one game. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. the, the the fun thing about Magic Leap is that um, I heard some developer they said that the Magic like Magic Leap um, it's like the content is not enough for people mm -hmm. to purchase like two or three thousand they don't feel like it's worth it yeah yeah right so right. so yeah you see like an real embryo is like a few hundred bucks i i saw the mm -hmm. the commercial one like uh oh, su super crazy one but i i saw the um uh, the the you know, like everyday wear one it's like a few hundred mm -hmm. bucks i yeah. think I, that I one might be better but you see apple is going to have their ar glass you see like rumors have, yeah. yeah rumors everywhere so i feel like ar <laughs> might be easier to adapt be adapt uh for mm -hmm. everyone's everyday life than vr vr probably will be a little later after ar everyone is like fully <laughs> accept and then the internet speed is faster and then because mm -hmm. i read a book it says that if you want people to kind of fully uh, embrace the immersive uh, yeah. technology. The first one is the frame rate. Right. Like um, you couldn't have a lagging of the motion. And the second mm -hmm. one is the resolution, right? Because yeah. for example, like after one second, I kind of hear whatever you say, <laughs> but your, uh, your mouth just open a little bit. It's kind of like right. contradict jarring. with your, yeah, it's jarring and your brain might feel uncomfortable. So that's one, and second one is the resolution of all the object. Mm -hmm. Imagine everything looks so blur, and you might not even want to see it, right? Yeah. And the third one is probably like the uh, the the headset. If the headset is too heavy, you you know, like uh, mm -hmm. I remember in educator in VR, Norrell said that it's it's better um, to have the VR meeting within forty minutes. Because people couldn't wear it for more than 40, uh, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in all space, it's better to keep your uh, speech short, kind of around 30 minutes. And the 10 minutes is like Q&A. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, so this is yeah. kind of like the reality right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, and I would just reemphasize the thing about the audio. It's like, if there's tingy or high pitch like on the audio side that'll just drive people nuts like, mm -hmm. they won't they'll just quit the, the meeting altogether so yeah like the quality of the internet connection like yeah you know, i don't know 5g would be great but you know the way that the u.s industry rolls out technology they kind of like slow out because they want to make as much money on the older technology as possible so you know, 5G, they're talking about it, but probably be a couple more years before most of the phones have it. And I think that's where like the a mass market adoption is going to be necessary uh, for people to uh, to be willing to put money uh, into it. Where uh, Facebook's like, they, they're an advertising company, right? So um, that's where the brands are. Sub and, and actually, when I was working, well, I guess we'll, we'll get there in a sec. <laughs> Let me uh, go to the next slide. Oh, right here. So this is a project that I worked on um, for Total Immersion. Uh, back 10 years ago, they were the leader. Um, before the Unity um, was doing augmented reality and virtual reality, Total Immersion was a French company, and they were unique because they could do these color uh, experiences. And so I worked on the projects for Disney. Um, like, this is one for Kraft, LG. And this is a game um, that we worked on. Um, I didn't work on this one. There's two others. I did the one with the Jonas Brothers and something else. Um, but essentially, it's, it's just a, a tracker, which um, and is running using the Flash player. So remember Adobe Flash, and uh, I have a lot of fond memories of Flash, um, but this is the last year uh, it's gonna be around. Um, I'll just pause that. It looks like it's buffering. Can you guys still hear me okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, 
Okay, good. Because I yeah, see the, the video videos lagging. <laughs> so I just stop the video and move on to something else. But um, but yeah, this is uh, so you just the web camera and then you just hold the tracker to it, and then a lot of these uh, brands were interested in it, and Total Immersion was charging at least fifty thousand. $80,000 per project for this kind of stuff. And um, and I remember when the Euphoria came out and then they were able to do augmented reality <laughs> and then also start targeting the phones that they started changing and it became very competitive and uh, the market started to shift. But, but it was fun um, back then. And that's where I learned a lot about you know, creating uh, content for, uh, well, creating content on the one hand and then programming it on the other. Okay, let's see. Uh, everyone knows uh, Pokemon Go, right? So I'll just kind of skip the slide, but just wanted to go through this. HoloKit, um, have you guys ever heard about HoloKit? This one? This is like from a few years back in, I am really hollow kit. <laughs> I feel like it's like Google Cardboard, right? It's similar. It's similar because like this is like the Google Cardboard, and then when you open it up, it's just you know like this. But this one, you can see, it's got like this mirror, kind of like a transparent mirror oh. in it. And then what happens is you put the phone inside. Mm. So then you got your camera over here and your phone over there. And then you look at it like this. And then it, it merges the phone screen with what you see. So it creates that mixed reality effect. Um, I don't think they're actually developing this anymore. I mean, I checked their GitHub. And, um, and it, 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 it looks like it hasn't been... <laughs> So, but they were in Silicon Valley, um, and they were targeting, and they were working with Unity, um, oh. what their SDK was in. Yeah, I mean, because right now the the thing about XR is that a lot of uh, like it, it it's like a really fast speed to kind of mm -hmm. abandon some of the company like a lot of company they just never produce anything for example like ocular oculus go uh and yeah. then here we are something related to phone and then the big gear it's kind of like being replaced by oculus yeah. quest because quest is just so easy and without you know the line mm -hmm. you can pretty much play around yeah. with it and then um i just update my quest and i saw my hands you know, like they yeah, are well, you're, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so without a glove, you see like, um, I feel like right now the technology, they are trying to make it lighter, like light, lighter and lighter and make yeah. catchment less and less or the gear smaller and smaller, which is well, great. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, like technology evolves. Like the, and then here's HoloLens 2. Like uh, I haven't tried the HoloLens 2, but did the HoloLens one? I made some program for it, and uh, the thing that I I was really taken aback by it was they actually have what they call an HGU, like a holographic uh, unit. It's like there's a CPU, a GPU, an oh, HGU. Yeah. It, it's pretty and, much like you wear a computer on your head. Uh, on yeah. your head, yeah. It's like a three thousand computer just wear it. And it's really right. heavy, and then the the, yeah. the 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 view is really small. And then people said that oh, like uh, when Magic Leap comes out, Magic Leap make it like yeah. a, a super small pack, right? Mm -hmm. So you put on your um, like pocket. But the problem about it is that when it runs too long, and then uh, yeah. it, it kind of get heat up, and your your skin might get burned if you keep putting burn if you like, keep it on too long. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a it, it's not optimal like but you know, the interesting thing about technology is well number one 
every year things either get cheaper or faster or smaller or all three kind of those things are going on yeah and, and there's software and there's hardware so software is like what we're programming in but then there's also the equivalent there's computer science and then there's electrical engineering dealing with like the transistors and the chips uh, that are inside these devices and so when software becomes um i guess good enough or important enough then they just they take it out of memory instead of like loading the program and running it they actually take these routines like algorithms and they bake them into the chip so that's the trend i guess in the last like three three to four years um because when microsoft decided to create their own holographic processing chip in order to deal with the physics and everything that's different in order to relieve the cpu and the gpu from um, that tax then i think other companies began to wonder like oh how can we use this and so they start to build their own customized chips for servers like google has uh, that they run in google has chips now that they're running in their server uh, their server farms and even like apple apple like two years ago they bought a company uh, that produces a GPU. Um, so these uh, kind of innovation, um, I guess, uh, evolution of uh, technology over time is what's driving, you know, these kind of new experiences. And so even though the headset's heavy today, it's like, you know, in the future, it's like, you know, things could change uh, even more. Uh, as opposed to like, you know, 10 years ago, all we could do was use a computer to have any kind of experience and now it's like everyone's carrying around the phone playing with uh playing games you know? <laughs> yeah cool we're gonna and this is something on my list of things to experiment with uh the have, has anyone actually played with one of these is this is this worth yeah five? yeah yeah i i i had one of those and then i gave away to oh. one of my design <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's not worth it? <laughs> it's, it? Yeah, it's not worth it. It's called Windows Mixed Reality, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's VR. It's VR. It's not Mixed Reality, it's VR. They just mess you up. <laughs> but, but I think yeah. it's too, uh, uh, those are like lasers. Those are like cameras, right? Or are they sensors? Uh, no, no, no. They, they are VR. They yeah, are sensors. Yeah, they're sensors, yeah. They're sensors. Okay, so you don't yeah, want to cool. the wall. It's more of a VR headset than an MR headset, obviously. I don't know why you're just saying it's an MR headset. It's an MR. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Okay. They're sensors. They're sensors. I don't know. <laughs> I think the graphics are kind of misleading people. It's like, oh, what, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, it's possible. I mean, there are some that do have cameras, but yeah, this one, I haven't actually play with this play the whole platform kind of thing. so uh and then here's the last uh xr to talk about and actually in these uh presentations that i have like you know like the videos you know they'll play if there is a video this one's just a slide but if you click on the link it'll take you to the web page mm -hmm. yeah. down do you want to share the the, the um, oh yeah yeah all this is gonna, gonna get all this yeah yeah cool cool yeah i mean Great. And then these companies like Sennheiser, THX, um, and then this is from Facebook, you know, the Oculus 360 audio, spatial audio. So basically how to control the sound uh, and there's some good, um, really good articles in here. Uh, and then there's more kind of like how to use it. But there's like three different platforms. And I would have added both AR, but uh, but both is discontinuing their augmented reality. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, because um, for me, it's like How, you, you wait. One, right? Yeah, so. I, 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 I want one. But um, it's like um, uh, one of their scenario, I was raising a question while their developer were presenting about the idea for uh, how to use both AR. Is okay. that? Because Bose AR is pretty much sunglass, but they are using for nightclub 
right? For the bouncer, right? Um, for the bouncer. They can, they, yeah, for the bouncer. They can hear like some, okay, you know. But, but you know, how can you wear both AR glass inside, in, indoor? Well, you wear sunglass indoor in, in your room. No, it's like outside. So yeah. how can you make a good usage of just uh, oh, right. Yeah, right. And then if it is, because uh, uh, the original idea is more like sunglass and you go outside, you listen to the music, but how can you kind of like um, wear sunglass, listen to the music indoor? Mm -hmm. or a nightclub like you, you you might not see anything if you wear sunglass in, in in the nightclub right so yeah yeah i know this is pretty unfortunate to have this happen yeah, i thought they were pretty cool and i just played with it i mean it's really cool, it's really cool. Yeah, it's cool. i hope they continue to work for you <laughs> it's a music player or something. Uh, all right. So the a lot of the examples that we saw before were made with Unity. Unity, and then the other one, the other big one is Unreal. And there's like app development, games, computers, except for Mac, right? Um, and then for these different uh, business use cases, and I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. Um, but um, for the most part, these consumer kinds of experiences and uh, business, or business experiences are led by these two software companies. Um, they used to be like, uh, well, Adobe Flash Player was always a two-dimensional two experience, but these are actually full 3D uh, tools. I mean, programming-wise, uh, they're really different, um, and it's, I, I would say um, Unity is more designer-friendly, uh, and Unreal is probably more programmer-friendly. <laughs> um, but, but, but some people think it's like the opposite. They think uh, Unreal yeah. because they have like the, you know, like the visual coding, so they think it's more friendly. And then uh, yeah. Unity, some people think it's harder because you have to actual code. And some people use Unreal to do like the high race, 360, uh, for, more for a movie industry and entertainment. And yeah. Unity is for, uh, for mobile. Yeah, yeah, for mobile, small game. And Unreal is for AAA game. Which one is easier for beginners to, to start learning? I would think Unity is. I mean, but still, you need to learn how to. Code I, I love Unity. I, I use Unity to code my game. This is my game, but I changed the name. I'm Unity, old, yeah. Unity has a free player, I'm mean, free version, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think a real is right now is doing the same thing as Unity. Yeah. If you are um, kind of users, yeah, Unity, reach, Unity developer, you know, yeah. yeah. Then you don't have to pay until you publish. And when you decide that you want to be able to put the app in the app store or into console, then, then they make you pay. <laughs> yeah, right. You have to license it out. So here's our, some of the graveyards, kind of things that came and went. Uh, Daydream went last year, both this year. Had nothing to do with the pandemic, nothing. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Google Glass, remember that? Oh, uh, is Google Glass still, still, still on the market? So there's two versions. There's the enterprise version for business, but then there's the version, the Explorer one. So they got rid of that one. Oh, uh, yeah. Right now it seems like, uh, you see like um, Google Glass, they are doing more for like enterprise and magically yeah. they are targeting uh, enterprise. It seems like the normal people like you and me, like we, uh, unless we left out. We left out. Yeah, yeah I, I feel like, yeah, for example, if I want to buy like some, um, some, some kind of like cool gears, it seems like mm -hmm. they only uh, sell for entrepreneur, uh, no, uh, enterprise. Right. 
enterprise. Yeah. And then uh, the price is like thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why. Yeah, yeah. You know, Cleef, Cleef, he he kind of used Embryo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he developed Embryo, and he thinks he he just loved Embryo before he loves um, well, Magic Leap. But you know, Magic Leap had a lot of um, stuff happen, so he switched to Embryo. And uh, I saw Enrio pretty much, it's really light and it's cheap and it's Android based and it's powered by Android phone. So it's mm -hmm. like pretty affordable and pretty cool. Hey product. George, I have to go, but I really appreciate your time and presentation. Oh, sure. uh, I too bad we can get to the more of the content. Uh, is there a way to reach you? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm online and actually I have, I have a slide back too with all my contact information and stuff too. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. So is it, is it on Discord? It will uh, be. Yeah, and uh, I will share the whole video uh, on Discord once it's up. And if you type George McKinney, uh, LinkedIn, you can connect with him. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, sure. Okay. Bye-bye. And then Aron, was that Aron? Yeah. All right. Cool. So... Samsung, I don't know actually what's happening here. I know it says Samsung XR, but Samsung had a VR video hosting service. So they're discontinuing that, which sucks because I've got like Samsung camera and I've only uploaded like one thing of there. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I guess they thought that they're, they're not getting the money that they want to see. So they're, so they're pulling the phone on their video. And I, I think mean, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like uh, as for the early adopters, like you and me, we kind mm -hmm. of use our spare time to do <laughs> those uh, cool exploration. And yeah. then we have other jobs that pays our bill. <laughs> right, right. That's fun. <laughs> if it wasn't fun, then we wouldn't bother. Yeah, yeah. Because this, it seems like it's still like a building. You know, like the technology and all the knowledge, we are kind of creating a future. The, uh, this area is not defined yet. So we have to jump in mm -hmm. and start kind of working and kind of creating some rules mm -hmm. for, for this area. So yeah. it's exciting, but uh, yeah, it seems like it's hard to get profit unless you are in some certain of area like web, AR, for commercial retail or something or cosmetics yeah there are like, yeah there are specific you know use cases of like branding opportunities like those marketing campaigns yeah. it's like yeah it's like providing what people can do because all they want to do is make an impression and let their brand be associated with your emotional fun experience so that you will transfer that feeling to their brand <laughs> so they're willing to pay for that yeah, uh, right. and then uh, if you're if you're willing to learn like unreal, uh, unreal or uh, uni 3d for like game development then there's a market for that as well yeah yeah, uh, yeah. not a yeah. huge market but there's a market <laughs> yeah i i would suggest if you kind of want to start learning those I would suggest to learn um, something that is the hardest one. Because for <laughs> example, like I learned Unity um, mm -hmm. back in 2018. After probably a uh, half a year, I, pro I, I start jumping into uh, Spark AR and uh, uh, oh, yeah? Snap AR. And I find out that's so easy. And then after <laughs> jumping to that, I find out that, oh, you know, it's hard to kind of, because everyone is doing it. And especially because mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel and then I got a lot of... Excuse me, is Ulity's uh, open source? No. No, hey, it's not. How are you doing? Hi. No, Unity mean... is not open source. <laughs> Unity is kind of free for a beginner or you want to learn independent uh, developer, but 
once you kind of earn some money, they kind of start charging you. So it's kind of freemium at the beginning and then start charging you once you make some money. Yeah, exactly. Interesting model, but it's worked well for them. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think there's probably more opportunity now on the business side of things. There's a variety of things that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in the Unity and Unreal will tell you, um, not on this slide, but say automotive transportation, architecture, engineering, film, TV. Uh, so let's see a couple. So Dacuary is uh, based in downtown Los Angeles or close to it. Um, and they had a kind of a consumer product but then they pivoted, and now they're like real industrial. Um, and then on the same foot, uh, Epson, the printer company from Japan, they also have a, uh, an industrial product. So plays a little bit of this. This person's walking along, what's he gonna do? So he's got to fix this machine, and so he's, uh oh. So I can do it like this. Yeah, yeah, little, just like. Just scrub through. So he's just getting instructions, da, da, da. And the Epson Bavaria is really nice. It's so small. Okay, well, that's that. I mean. I'm going to try to clear up some resources here. This will show. So this is from Autodesk, and they make a lot of software that's necessary. Is Autodesk like the the parent company for Maya, 3D Max? Yes. All oh, that one. No. And so, this one. here's another engineering application. Uh, this actually happened a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Ford uh, worked with Samsung to give them watches. And these watches were able to allow them to, to know if they were too close to someone else. <laughs> oh, oh, it's like co coronavirus, something. Yeah, like okay. it's tracking your interactions. <laughs> That's pretty useful right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, this company, Bad VR, uh, my friend um, Jad, Jad Miochi, he founded or co founded this company, and basically they're doing, um, they're visualizing data in virtual reality. And um, he actually connected like this MIDI, uh, kind of like this music tool in order to like you push buttons and so they, they, they kind of like program like a keyboard and then you push buttons and you can see different things so while you're wearing the headset you can just uh hit the keys and you know what you're doing you know uh so they're a startup um based in how many are el segundo uh, marina, marina del rey I think. Mm, very close And then here's, this I think was really cool. Uh, Alex, he used to live here in Los Angeles. He's actually my neighbor. <laughs> and then I remember he came over to my WeWork office and I was like, dude, you're a photographer because he used to get me into the clubs in Hollywood. And I used to go hang out with him. He's always taking pictures of this and that. And I said, hey man, this is, a, this is a 360 camera. And he's like, what, what's that? I don't know. And, <laughs> and then so, I got him into this thing and now he's, uh, this is such a nice video too. So basically she's giving a tour of a building of this house that's for sale. Oh. And I wish, I wish it would play. Yeah, like for real estate, it's really, really useful. You don't need to really visit there and you can pretty much get a virtual tool. 
Yeah. So, and this is a pretty, I mean, a straightforward kind of application to do um, capturing video. I mean, having the technique, and this is so smooth, looked like a holding the the um, the the selfie stick or the the rod for the camera, but then through software, he is able to like erase it so it doesn't look like it's even there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, so someone was asking, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of like there's a stitch mm -hmm. if you see it, and then on top and on the bottom. So if you can have like a super thin sticker, that would be great. It's like a super thin sticker. The thinner the better because if it is too big you will see like the the, the bar under it yeah so yeah there's different ways to to approach that but it, it's cool oh let's see all right so this is kind of a break point uh so that's kind of like overview kinds of stuff a little longer than I expected on that. But uh, any kind of questions or ideas um, before I continue? Because now we're going to transition to another kind of topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can just go ahead if we. Okay. Yeah, just go Good. ahead. So uh, the first thing you have to consider is like from like AR, VR, MR, spatial, whatever, like, you need to capture, you need to have content to show. So, uh, so this is the first thing, like, you want to capture it, you know, with, with a camera, something like this, or do you want to draw it yourself, or do you want to get a ready-made model uh, that you can incorporate into your experience, or do you want to, like, generate it with software? And so I think uh, depending upon your comfort or your, the challenge you're up to, that's kind of like the first thing um, to, get, to get out of the way. So uh, 360 cameras, um, I think we've all seen these things. I just put two links to different articles talking about what's hot today, you know? Um, uh, the 3D software, yeah, Autodesk 3ds Max uh, for for engineering, architecture, I mean, uh, CAD for building designs and Maya. And uh, when I was at uh, Total Immersion, uh, a lot of the, like, the designers they had, they mostly used Maya. Mm, yeah. Maya, it seems like, because uh, before I talked to David, it's mm -hmm. another um, 3D model um, kind of expert. Uh, he right. told me that Amaya pretty much having three or four pipelines. For example, it's modeling, right? And yeah. then it's um, animation. And then the uh, final, which, which one? Uh, re, mm -hmm. uh, texturing and animation, mm -hmm. like the whole pipeline. And it's right. all specialized. And he told me that nobody used Maya to, nobody is like super expert for Maya. <laughs> or from front to end but yeah. maya is a really good tools because it's kind of like having a really really good uh, mm -hmm. functions in every uh, pipe like industry pipeline so yeah. that's why yeah yeah i definitely think so this is the seems to be the most common in the, in the industry mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah even maya. though even though adobe Release this product. <laughs> I mean, that, that is like a kit, like a, 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 a kit? beginner, a, a beginner level. Beginner's yeah, tool? Okay. It, or, or do you like it? I, I don't know. It's just. No, no, I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I mean, Adobe, I think Adobe's been looking at this space for a very long time, and I'm surprised that they didn't jump in. Yeah. First. Yeah. I mean, because uh, uh, sometimes when I open like 3D models, I want to mm -hmm. open up Maya because I, I have Maya uh, software, but yeah. it end up to open uh, Adobe Dimension. I don't know why. And I oh. look up the tutorial and I was trying to explore, but it's so limited. It's kind of changing the texture. <laughs> Only, oh, just 
texture. And if, if I, I want to change the texture, I will use either Maya or I will use a, a substantial painter. painter. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I won't use. Yeah, I feel like that. that uh, that's yeah. too. Well, Adobe is like, they, if they don't give up on it, then they'll just, they just keep iterating it. They'll keep changing. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. but then again, they also do uh, discontinue products. I mean, they don't actually say they discontinue them, but they'll just like put a new name on it or they'll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll just, so they true. won't sell it for a while. <laughs> yeah, they just put another new name and continue doing their thing. They'll just take the code out and they'll put it into something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But um, SketchUp was a tool um, of stuff, but now it's a little different, you know. It used to be, I, I had a free copy of SketchUp, but now you gotta pay for it. Oh, um, it's all like that. But Blender is kind of like the big open source one. Yeah, um, right. Uh, it takes uh, some getting used to. Not mm -hmm. a, it's kind of rough around the edges, right? Yeah, because cause for me, I feel like Maya, it's, easier I, I know a lot of people say blender is easier but for me maya is easier because it's easier to control blender yeah. you have to do a specific uh uh you know like pattern and, yeah, yeah. and then yeah flow so you can scale stuff or rotate but maya you just use like a shortcut key so and then <laughs> maya is so uh, like accurate you yeah, just yeah. type the parameters and you will yeah. resize exactly what you want I, mm -hmm. I, I, I think my head is better. Is better. better. I don't know. Yeah. Some people like Blender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I understand. And here's another cheetah uh, 3D. But they all create um, and uh, the content that they create will be the, I mean, the, the assets. They the 3D model, so like you've got vertices and um, and uh, intersections, right? Mm -hmm. And and you have uh, you can have your textures that will wrap around the structure of your model, and then you can create scenes as well. And a scene will be the entire uh, universe that you're working in, stuff around it, right? So um it's very important uh thing to have but it's it's very uh but it's challenging and it definitely takes some time to learn and mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. okay and then there's the asset stores so uh google just launched one i didn't, I didn't even realize this but basically there are places where you can get art that people want to share or they want to sell. <laughs> so uh, and if you can't make it yourself, then you can find someone else who already did and get it from them. So all these are different places you can go. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the Adobe stock 3D content history, I think a uh, number of the stuff that Google has is free. Um, this 3D warehouse that's attached or connected to SketchUp. Um, people just like, uh, this was kind of like one of the early ones. I mean, because uh, before Adobe Soft, before Behance, um, like these on this side, they didn't even exist. But people were creating 3D uh, models and they were just putting them into SketchUp. I mean, into this 3D warehouse. Mm -hmm. You can just download it. And same thing with DeviantArt. And then um, depending upon what kind of asset it was, you know, you could use it or try to change it or, but, uh, and, ooh. and now we're going into the WebGL part. <laughs> so uh, there was three things where I said, so that you can capture it with cameras, those are kind of techniques. You can draw it with, with your software, copy it by getting it from someone else, or you can code it. So, um, and this is where I get a little more opinionated um, because uh, I prefer to use more open source or standards based 
uh, tools because that way they'll be around longer. Um, they may not have all the bells and whistles, but uh, since I'm just kind of playing around with this stuff and I want to see that it's still there, you know, a couple years, uh, I, I try to stick with this and, and being a software developer focus a huge portion on the web uh, in the last five, 10 years is just things have gotten a lot better, a lot smoother. And actually um, with HTML5 and the Canvas support, I mean, that's uh, what's allowed for a lot of web 3D to be possible. Um, and this Kronos group is like uh, I mentioned before, it's an association of all these uh, large manufacturers and software companies where they agree what this, how software is gonna, um, should perform, right? And they, they collaborate on that. And they also create um, file types. So like OBGA files or DAEs, you know, the Coladas and the OBJs. This, did I say that already? OBJ, DAE, but they, they've got different ways of uh, storing the assets that people use. So it's important to be aware that this is the group that, um, that it kind of emanates from. And then uh, we can proceed. So Blender, kind of covered that. Um, 3D overview, scene, camera, renderers, um, lights, ambient, directional, point spot. It's like you can have a scene, but if you don't have any lights in it, you're not going to see anything in your experience. <laughs> so you got to put a light in there somewhere because um, that's what your your image, your model is going to reflect that light. Um, textures. Um, you can have like a two-dimensional kind of thing, like a plane or a video. You can put that onto your plane. Um, it's just kind of like that first Java-based uh, demo. They had like those five videos. Those basically videos were playing on these two-dimensional walls. Um, they have no depth. So if you like kind of look around something that's 2D, it goes flat. And then you just see right through it or right past it. <laughs> Um, solid materials and UV maps are used to, to wrap around. And actually, here's an example of a UV texture map. And so this is the model with the texture wrapped around it. And then, um, and then this is the actual map itself. And you can use like Photoshop or GIMP or something uh, or this UV texture editor software um, to define the pieces. And so each one of these is gonna have some kind of coordinate system and then it'll know where to put it on the on your model. Okay, here's different kinds of geometries. And actually, when you're programming, this becomes more important um, because if you want to like do something, you have to, you know, create it by hand, you know, using software. Um, or someone has to, to create the, these tools. And here's just an example of a colada. Like um, I used this about five years ago <laughs> uh, when XML was really popular. So it's uh, commented out this line, oh well. <laughs> but, um, but nowadays we can use JSON. As a, as a data format. And there's actually like programs that'll convert into JSON and now the libraries can use JSON. So it's a lot more efficient, it's faster, much more friendly on the web. Um, I remember trying to use these Collada files and using the flash. Uh, and then we'd have to like spend like a minute or two waiting for the model and then all the these assets to like to load, to buffer into memory before we could even start the experience. So, I mean, it wasn't just like the speed, but it's like, but yeah, it's like it takes time to parse this kind of information. So we're in a much better place today. And then uh, I saw this and I thought this was a neat uh, overview of WebGL. 
And did you ask, have you seen this before or no? No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, so I thought this was pretty uh, cool kind of intro to to this. And actually, it kind of reminds me one second. I, I had to go to my library and, and pick up one of my old books. And, oh, and wow. <laughs> but this is, oh, it's called 3D and Flash. Well, is 3D. Flash still there? No, it's not. No, it's not. So, I mean, yeah, I've got all these old books and it's like we're covering uh, like how to do this stuff. <laughs> oh, I, I remember when I was in our center back in 2000. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, so long, uh, 2010, yeah. and I, I learned Flash. And right now, Flash is not even inside Adobe. It's called animation or something. I, I forget. Adobe Animate, yeah. Oh, they kind of renamed it. It's, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're targeting you know, HTML5 content creation with, I mean, it still exports Swift files. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not sure if it does air applications but but yeah it's uh <laughs> but yeah the concepts are the same right from java programming using uh ja java augmented reality to flash augmented reality and now we've got ar web ar <laughs> it's, the concepts are all the same and they just ported the code from one language to another mm -hmm. and so now we just kind of we just keep going with it. So, uh, and then I wanted to mention this about uh, voice application. Mm -hmm. I think for me, this represents uh, a, a, another way of interacting with our virtual content. And I think it's going to get more and more so. And, and actually, I've had this idea that I've been tinkering with uh, to do a voice application with VR so that while I'm wearing the headset, I can just tell it what I want to do. <laughs> because um, the having to hold the controller like this, you know, like I'm not very good with like in these kind of uh, D-pad controllers. So, you know, I, mean, I was an older generation. I need a joystick. But, but I think I can just tell it what I want and I can go there. And I think that's that, that'll work fine for me. Uh, here's some videos. I mean, it seems like we're having a hard time getting the videos to play. I'm kind of scared to try it. <laughs> Maybe but, just show like the, like the, uh, the, the like stop point. The stop so, point. Yeah, so, kind of like, uh, like, like different points so we can see overall. This one comes <laughs> up, we'll see in a second. Oh, this is just examples. Oh, let me turn that one. Come in. I'm going to try to close some more. Yeah. Run uh, my browser tabs. Gee, right? Look at this. So this one, hey, 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 who's ever been downtown LA to the LA mall? LA mall, oh, uh, I think I probably, go I probably went there, but I just don't know which mall. So this LA mall is like, it's across the street from the uh, LA City Hall. That's LA City Hall over there. <laughs> And then, and then here's the federal building over here. Mm -hmm. And then there's this thing, this white structure. And it was created, I guess, in the 70s with these colored lights on it. And then after a while, they took all the lights off. And then, um, but like two years ago, a year and a half ago, they had a series in the fall of concerts 
And so there were like live performances and like a couple thousand people came to listen to it. So I said, oh, you know what? This would be a cool thing to do in VR. And there was a couple other people that were thinking the same thing, like making the VR recordings. And so uh, I promised that it looks a lot better on YouTube. Just for some reason my internet is not performing well. <laughs> But yeah, you can check that out. Um, come back over here. Triforium. Mobile Agony Reality. Can't, I don't remember what that one was. Let's, oh, oops. Let's come to the next one. And then these are some other videos. Oh, now this one, this demo. Yeah, this one can come up. This one should work. It's like 45 degrees. Oh, oh, this is what this is. So this, I made this video. Oh, no, this is. So, this is a mobile augmented reality that I made about six or seven years ago. And this was because it's using, um, yeah, form of web AR. Mm -hmm. So I'm turning on the camera right here. And then so this little square over there, that's got the, the camera. And then it detects the um, the marker, and then it animates the Earth while it's tracking it. So what so language? This is all, do you do? What language? That's JavaScript. It's okay. JavaScript. Now we use like a, a like I, I remember my my first web AR is using the template from Ethwall. From where? Ethwall. Ethwall. What's that? A Ethwall. Uh, you don't know. It's fine. It's Can I type it in the chat. The okay. Ethwall. Yeah, I use Ethwall. Uh, the language is Ethwall. Oh, Ethwall. Ethwall. A few years ago. Yeah. It's not that old. So this is something I made um, for fun. A couple years ago, um, and this is using 3JS, and I I made it to be like uh, like a virtual reality. Because if you notice the kind of Google Cardboard down here, mm. and then so the concept was I think about like a winter holiday card. <laughs> mm. Winter. Oh. Yeah. And then I went to the Consumer Electronics Show, and so I took some pictures around. So this is us at the bar as we're about to leave. This is a, that's Kevin Winston. He's kind of a little popular <laughs> fellow. He's run Studio LA. Um, and then, but the idea is like you wear the, you wear this, and then you can go to another one. So it's using the gaze to look at it long enough. And then now you can like navigate around to different kinds of things. Like, oh, let's take a look at the, uh, that one. Now we can take a look around over here. So let's go. So, so I'd like to replace this kind of gaze navigation with the voice instead <laughs> yeah i think a voice will be uh in the future will be the um, kind of like the main communication uh to for a human to communicate with the machine yeah especially as uh, as we get older <laughs> we can make it a lot easier <laughs> yeah And then uh, let's 
Okay. So, uh, as far as like capturing um, content, uh, this is from a couple of years ago. Some people at NPR, there's a link to their article about how they did it. Um, I think it's kind of dated now, um, but uh, fundamentally still works. Um, for me, I think it's a little too much work um, to do it in this way. Um, because you know you have to use say like Premiere, which is like a, oops, which is like a full-on video editing kind of software, um, and it, and you need to have a pretty powerful system uh, to manage that. Um, and what else? What else? I, I think right now, because before I kind of managed one uh, 360 uh, camera campaign. Uh, oh, pretty yeah? much right now, if you buy some 360 uh, small camera attached to your smartphone, pretty much they have their own like apps or software to stitch for you. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. unless I, I mean, even there are a lot of 360 video cameras out there, right? Like mm -hmm. I don't know, like LG or like Samsung or yeah. some some others. I haven't really did the research, did the research for, mm -hmm. for the most current one, but I think two years ago I did the, the previous one. It's like you don't have to use like premium or something to make a skybox, like make a, mm -hmm. a world, a, a bubble, yeah. like, right. like a six picture you don't, or I don't know right. how many pictures. Yeah, you don't have to make a skybox. But mm -hmm. all you need to do is to buy the uh, camera and then record it, and then the software will stitch for you. Stitch it on the camera, right? Mm, yeah, and then we just kind of on your phone, so you can start sharing to your um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. Twitter, or maybe other mm -hmm. platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what I said. Like this is like what. 2017 <laughs> so like but you know the techniques are like taking still pictures from a photographic camera and then stitching them together manually so that's what these workflows were designed to accomplish but yeah I definitely think that for a consumer kind of level things like test out the software that comes with the camera like if you can download it from the app store or google play and then you can just say okay what does this thing do you know i think that'd be a better way to go because uh having actually uh, when you're using your camera it's like you fill it up you, you you'll spend time you, you you have to get another memory card and then taking the once you take the memory card out of it, then you need to have some kind of way of stitching these images together and getting them out so you can share them. Because I think that's the biggest uh, bottleneck because it takes a, uh, a couple minutes for every image to come out. And when you're doing video, then it takes even longer. So you, that, that's got to change, you know, if people are going to uh, take take this more seriously really <laughs> because if it's too slow then they're not going to share and uh and then if people don't, and if people don't share then there's no content that their friends want to see and so then they won't want to use it <laughs> so, and so that hurts everybody so i i do wish that they would um uh, focus on that uh shareability uh, problem which is uh, kind of goes into my next topic oh wait oh People I follow before <laughs> follow you, Dominique. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, on LinkedIn, you you posted so many things over the years. They're really, really cool. <laughs> yeah, right. Right now, I, I I kind of slow down, but yeah, I would definitely do the following. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. Oh, so what am I doing? What am I? Oh, let me come out of this because I think now it's time to get into the code or what I wanted to do. Okay. So let me try this. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, we have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, oh. if you can kind of like just show. Let me see if this works. Yeah. Oh, oh, cross my fingers. My, my web hosting company had a problem this morning, and I think, is it working? It looks like it's working, it's working, yay! It's slow, but it's working. Oh, it's just the WordPress site. Okay. So, with WordPress, have you ever used WordPress? You know? Yeah. 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 So, there's a couple of plugins for VR. Mm -hmm. I've been using one that uh, I liked, but mm -hmm. it got glitchy, so I need to fix it. <laughs> Um, but there's another company that came out with a, a VR, but then they also have like a paid version of it too. And so I started experimenting with that one. Um, but give so there's WP VR. This is the one I like. Uh, WP VR. Okay. But it hasn't been updated in a while. And so when you, on the computer, it looks fine, you know? But on the phone, mm -hmm. it's, it's got some kind of glitchy, it's like the orientation, because it tracks, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, technology changes, so it's, it's just out of sync. So I'm going to do something about that. I'll pull it up. Because it's one thing to be able to share like on Facebook or Twitter, like out to the world. But I also think, especially if you're a small company, then you don't necessarily want to put all your content or that or even your family stuff, you know, out in kind of a public space. So uh here Canary Wharf, White Tower, Tower of London. Okay. We'll do Canary Wharf. So it's called WPVR, right? The plugin. Okay. But this one's got, the, oh, no, no, not this one. Not WPVR. It says upgrade. No, this is the one I was talking about. This WPVR view, this is the one I like because mm. it's simple to use, uh, but it's got a, a bug right now. Some, some mm. So I'll there and fix it. Um, and then there's this one, WPVR, which does work. It was a little clunky, I think, um, because you have to create uh, an ID for everything um, before you can use it. Whereas with the WPVR, it's really simple. It's like you can transfer the image to your phone, and then you can use the WordPress to upload the image from the phone to WordPress from the phone. So you go from the camera to the phone, the phone to the website, and then you can see it. So that makes it a lot, lot easier. Um, so actually, part of the I So, Three on one page, but not the best user experience, right? I'll pop in in a second, but let's come back over here. And let's go to a post. Let's see all posts. Yeah, we have um, how many minutes? A few yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, a few more. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. Here's one. So this is on the website. Let's see. I would say put the highest resolution image possible because if you if you don't have like an eight megabit uh, eight megabyte image on the website, then it's not going to look very good on the phone. Because if you have a high resolution phone, you're going to need a high resolution image. So. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, when you're using the VR mode, then you can actually see it and you actually feel like you're there. So, what this looks like, this one, where's the new one? Yeah, I mean, pretty much uh, this is kind of like the um, the web uh, plugin for the uh, yeah for for so I'm just excited. Photos, sorry. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I think maybe we can. Uh, do you have any other slide mm -hmm. you want to talk? Uh, slides, uh, no, I had code, I can show you. <laughs> I mean, maybe we can kind of like uh, go over, like maybe use one minute and like. Okay, like a summary? Yeah, like the summary. Okay, great. Let's see, back here. Yeah. So. Well, uh, definitely in our terms of continuing learning, uh, some places I think are interesting are like the SIGGRAPH conference. Uh, they seem to come through LA every other year or so. Uh, check out the Game Developers Conference in San Francisco. Yeah, um, G GDC month. right now is free, so I'll just register. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great thing to do. Um, and then this augmented reality world expo, um, good. And I guess a final thought is uh, that I sought to, like, I think that we're trying to connect our experiences and come away from it uh, with a different perspective and connections. Uh, but this technology can be difficult at times, um, but I think it's worth the risk to do it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I hope that some of the ideas that I put across were helpful um, to get you to think differently and definitely encourage mm -hmm. everyone to try to do more uh, mm -hmm. in this area. Um, I think doing something uh, open source uh, mm -hmm. is is a good thing to do possible but most important just have fun you know mm, yeah i mean I, I got a lot of fun just coding and learning coding and learning all the stuff and mm -hmm. create some um, some pretty cool uh, games or something then i feel um, a sense of achievement and i feel happy okay. mm -hmm. yeah cool okay. Yeah, thank you for your uh, speaking and anyone has any questions? Yes. I have a question for George when the PowerPoint is over. Well, JT? 
Hi guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a question. So first of all, George, thanks very much. That was very informative indeed. And, and I'm not a technologist. I don't have a background in XR at all, but I'm very curious about the space. I've been following it for a while uh, from, from the periphery. Uh, yeah. Without going into details, I always uh, uh, appreciate being, you know, mm -hmm. brought up to speed as to what's hot right now and and what what's out, what's in and what's out. Mm -hmm. um, and also, th thanks for taking me back to my C64 days, which got me into uh, <laughs> you know, a little bit of, of of programming and whatnot. Oh, during, uh, and during I, I brought this. You know. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, is that is that a is that a cassette? Yeah, and, and it's a data you set. That, yeah. uh, set. you know the the, yeah. the little. The yeah. device, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, re I remember those times. That was that was uh, that was good stuff. We were lucky to uh, to grow up doing that environment and, 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 mm -hmm. and you know uh, be be exposed to uh, to the technology in such a fun way. Even though it's amazing, what you know, thinking back now, how little I mean, how little memory, how how, how slow these machines were, and, and, and the whole yeah. Thing. But it was the beginning of a new era. The beginning of uh, a, a, a new uh, ecosystem, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. the, the C twenty, then the sixty four, the Atari, yeah. the Commodore Amiga. Then we get into the yeah. Apple, Apple Plus, Apple II E, Plus, yeah. Apple II e which is my was my second computer, an Apple II E clone. Actually, oh, really? I, I I don't know that when I <laughs> when I start using computer, it seems like it's already pretty much established. <laughs> it, 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 it was it was, it was a, 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 yeah it was a it was a dominic it was a it was a an apple computer that was slightly less powerful than your macbook just just slightly, <laughs> slightly. less powerful. You, you know i i heard like i watched a documentary uh film it seems like the the rocket and the spaceship to the moon the apollo 11 oh, it yeah. is less powerful than your mac make then your, then your smartphone right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah then, then your smartphone like re, yeah like a really weak and can send people to the moon <laughs> and so george you went to usc as well i got my i, I also went to a uh, mm -hmm. model so uh, oh yeah oh cool yeah 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 i graduated in 97 i don't know what, what oh year. no i'm much later than oh, nice. yeah much later 10 years a little more to the after you yeah all right cool cool so here's my question um um are you familiar with Neil Stevenson? He wrote Snow Crash and some other science fiction novels. Mm, no. Okay. no. Okay. So Neil Stevenson is this he's a science fiction writer, futurist, technologist, who is a friend of Jeff Bezos. And so he's been working with Bezos on Blue Origin, the, right. the space company. And uh, he's also the chief futurist at Magic Leap. Oh, okay. And uh, so, really smart guy. He wrote a book about twenty years ago called Snow Crash. Um, uh, JT, can you can you type on the chat, Snow Craft or something? Snow Snow Crash. Yeah, let me. Uh, snow. Yeah. Because I, I I can kind of order uh, the Crash. book or. Something. Neil Stevens. Oh, cool. All right. Thank you. Um, and so in this book, the snow crash, it, it, oh, it, snow it's crash. all, it all plays in what he calls the metaverse, the metaverse, which is a virtual reality uh, mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the statements that one of his characters makes in that book, which is really a reflection of the author, is that the explosion of the metaverse and the success of the metaverse really dependent, depended on the development on human-like avatars. That was the big breakthrough that, that moved this virtual space, virtual reality in, in modern terms, if you want, uh, out of being something you know, for, 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 for kids, uh, you know, a toy or, or gaming and whatnot, to something that is being used by uh, people all over the world for, for business meetings and whatnot. So uh, instead of having, as today, we have an uh, uh, all space VR, for example, an avatar, that is a Lego figure, more or less, right? You have an avatar that might have a, a stylized or a fantasy body, but it has the real image, the real picture of the person speaking. So it's a lifelike head, essentially, on whatever body you want to give yourself. Um, and 
of course, the reasoning is that when, when you interact with some, somebody, um, there's so much nonverbal communication that comes through to, to mimicry and, 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 and whatnot that is currently not available. And so my, and to go back to my question is, I, uh, to, to go back to my question, are you aware of any company or any effort um, that is currently going on that seeks to combine a, a, a virtual body with a realistic face? And, and how would you do that, right? Because if we're wearing the, the goggles. That's happening already. Yeah. No, I mean, they're definitely, you know, with those deep fake videos, I mean, there's definitely a computer model. I mean, like, the shape of a person's head, it's like, I, like they teach that in art school. Like, everyone's got a base. And then there's some variations around that. So you can approximate those kinds of things. And then getting someone's lips to move, you know, um, or um, it's just a matter of training because like um, if you wanted to type something then you could have the words come out um, right in software you know but, so if but let's, like, let, let, <laughs> let, let's go even deeper than that right uh, let's not talk about the deep fakes or the you know just the, yeah. the animation but real time so well, no, it can be real time that's what i'm trying to get to because now, I work with uh, Amazon Web Services Technologies. I do like a lot of voice programming. So mm -hmm. like Alexa, they have an Amazon Connect, the chat bots uh, through like Lexbots and, and machine learning, real-time streaming, uh, just like the facial recognition. It's like the computers are so fast. It's like if there's 5G, 6G connectivity, then that's sufficient because what they can do is they can train the models um, to recognize people. So it's like, in order to just like move like the joints that would constitute a face um, to be a realistic, um, so it doesn't have to be like alive. Because what, what we need to do is get away from uh, having to show every frame. Because like the human eye is like needs 30 frames a second or maybe a little less, right? to be tricked and say, oh, this is an illusion. But at 30 frames comes at a cost of uh, bandwidth. Uh, and so if we can reduce that down to like a set of data points that are like a trained model that we already know what this person's head looks like. And, and then here's like what they're using today. It's like, this is like an Intel RealSense camera. Like you can do depth tracking. Uh, so like you can make, you can just sit, like I had a friend, Mike, he like, he sat us in a chair and he just spun us around in a circle and then he just scanned the head. And then now it's like a mask. And so once they get these kind of models of someone, then it's just a matter of uh, rigging the bones or in, uh, in order to, to move according to like the sounds that we know the body makes uh, based on uh, when someone speaks, then it's like a, kind of like a tin can. Remember the, we used to have those two cans and then tied with a string, you speak on one side and it vibrates. It's, it's a similar kind of thing. And on the other side, turns back into audio. So um, I think this is not a far away. Okay, so, so I see the argument for this not needing to be real time. Because for this to be real time, you would have to have a camera uh, in front of you, like no, you, know, no, you can do it just with audio. You, you don't need to have a camera. I mean, so so if it's if it's if it's uh, if it's um, virtual, if it's a map of your face mm -hmm. and all kinds of facial expressions that you you yeah. know you or that people J make. J J J library. J T actually, uh, if you go to spatial.io, I put on a chat. And huh. at the beginning, you go to the, that, that kind of like a social event, you go there and it requires you to give them a 2D picture and then they will kind of make it 3D look like. So inside the, um, inside the virtual uh, meeting, if you, uh -huh. you wear All your right. goggle and you become like, I look like myself. Okay. And when I talk, my mouth is kind of faking talk. So um, it, it looks like, you know, Ghostbusters ghost. Like everyone is like a um, hollow, hollow, hollow ghost. 
and okay. then uh, it's that in real time. It's not really real time rendering because they take your photo or they you kind of like give them like your two D photo. For example, like you have like your face, and they will check that this face can be mapped into like right. more three D rounded. So it's it's another it's another step on the way to something that's fluid and lifelike because this is certainly not I'm, I'm looking at it right now on this monitor over here mm. and it's not uh it's 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 an image of your face and maybe it's even from different directions but it's certainly not reflecting any emotions for example right oh yeah. you I think, that's a, I think that's a matter of uh just pro taking the time to build those uh libraries of uh, yeah exactly of the shapes of the face i mean because i don't think that's the uh, difficult i mean i mean it's just a matter of the desire to like is there a market for this it's like Who's a vol volumetric video right you, you need a room of cameras around you and it's kind of like an integrate with 5g so whatever you move it's kind of creating a live holographic of you but you uh, need a room of camera kind of 360 a cylinder and you sit in the middle and with like a green screen around you it's you know meta meta stage you know like but I'm, I'm thinking that you need that you need and and this is what they do in the movies right uh uh for uh creating virtual actors they have this huge um i think it was even a usc professor <laughs> who developed one of those applications it's huge the huge sphere yeah. with like a 300 cameras or or whatnot uh, to take an image of the actor as they're moving. Motion capture, yeah. You know, that's what the chimerical, that cinematic VR, they use that process. Yeah, yeah. But for uh, a simplified, and this is obviously very expensive and, and, and not a consumer product, but a simplified version that would just focus on the face so that I can mirror or I can match um, facial expressions and, and but, feelings to what is being said yeah, uh, I, I think that's the harder part yeah. to do. Yeah, because matching someone's true emotion is versus the words that they say, that would be the harder part. Because in I think that's where a camera or a couple of cameras pointed on the face could better capture that as the face makes its movement. I think because maybe 5G, like the data can trans for like more data within short amount of time. So you can like make yeah. it, is, what is that one? What's that? So this is, a, this is just a motorcycle helmet, right? But it gives you the room to not only be present in the, you know, have the equivalent of the headset on, which you need mm -hmm. to be in a virtual environment, but it also gives you the room to have cameras facing the front, mm -hmm. facing, um, you know, to, to uh, directing at uh, your face to capture any emotions uh, while you're speaking. Mm. Oh. I was just curious if anybody, if, if you're aware, George, or, or yeah. the, the, if, if anybody. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Facebook, they have like a two cameras. One is shooting outside to see whether you bump into something and it can catch your hand in mo like hand motion so you don't have to wear a glove. And the reality will be like transparent on top of virtual reality makes, makes it like a mixed reality. But as for shooting to map your facial expression, it probably needs a certain of uh, distance. But you and need then, a little bit of distance, which a helmet would give you, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe probably a little distance so it can map. And then uh, I think lighting is important because if the lighting is too dark or something, and absolutely, yeah, we'll so, capture it. Yeah. Another yeah. thing that a helmet can solve. So I'm already thinking, you know, it's it's uh, it's anybody, and, and this could be a consumer product because now we're yeah. talking about yeah, yeah. J J JT JT Star One Star One Company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me think about that. You know, yeah, uh, uh, yeah that would be cool. And you can do some prototype. That's right. <laughs> yep, okay. that would be cool. All right. Well, well, thanks for thank you. Yeah, thank you, though. Thank you. Okay. Good to see you again. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. That was it. Yeah. That that that's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm signing yeah. off.
Bye, everybody. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, George. And then, yeah, see you thank around. You, yeah, thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. bye, -bye.